Good evening. I don't usually speak at events like this, but your generous host and curator Richard Stewart has prevailed upon me to reconsider. <laughs> My name is Carl Hammond. Uh, I am a painter and friend of Bernard Surio. I met Bernard <laughs> while vacationing in Spain. You see, we're we were both running with the bulls when one of them, well, we soon discovered we had much in common, more than both being painters. <laughs> Bernard took me to his studio to see his work. <laughs> this was many years ago. He was unknown then. I thought his work phenomenal. The rest is, uh, ah, ah as they say. A couple of years ago, I ran into Richard and his wife Catherine in New York. I took them to the gallery where Surio was opening an exhibit. Richard was so taken with Surio's work that he, he set out to bring Surio back to Europe. <laughs> and now, thanks to a, a generous donation from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Paul Simmons, we have this eight-city tour, and now, here I am. I'm sure Richard would like me to say something about Surio's work. The tones and textures, the non-representational experience, the aesthetic concept, the singular collation of colour, or whatever else the art theorists or intellectuals are saying nowadays. Well, I am a painter. If you want that sort of thing, you can talk to a critic. I prefer to talk about the man. <sighs> there is a story of Bernard Surio as a young child in Spain. His uncle was known for his splendid gardens. It was said of his uncle that his talent was a, a gift from God, that his beds of flowers flourished far into excess, and the abundance of colour and beauty that flowed from the fertile soil generously filled the windows and walkways and gardens of the village. Well, one day the uncle died. And it fell to Surio's mother to prepare the old man for burial. And so, with Bernard in hand, they set out near dusk. <laughs> Bernard's mother was unusually quiet, but she talked a little to the young boy so that he might begin to understand. Bernard certainly felt his mother's mood and longed for the uncle with whom he'd been clearly the favourite. Quietly, the two passed along the old road as the light began to fade. They arrived at the uncle's home as the vivid colour of day slips into the dark grey of night and the reds and greens and yellows of the familiar flowers faltered, becoming hollow ashen ghosts. Bernard's mother left him in the yard while she tended to the old man. Then, wearily, she joined Bernard to stroll in the garden. After a while, Bernard stopped his mother and asked, Que hizo tío con el color? What did uncle do with the color? There was far too long a gap before she finally understood that question. Therein lies the soul of Bernard Surya. Is there a more profound experience that shapes our lives than the innocent thoughts, contrasting experience, or innocent acceptance of a child? Where a child is free to exist in the immediate world of impression, does it not grow only to diminish itself in the 
vain folly to comprehend oneself and the <laughs> reckless struggles to assert our absurd existence. <laughs> Ultimately, there's only failure in our presumption of truth and the justification of our arrogance. <sighs> there are two worlds that Surya experiences. The world is a man in which we attempt and fail to understand and yet in our arrogance trust profoundly. And that world is a child in which we simply accept it but no longer trust. 